Uh, I like this game. I don't know if that was obvious to anybody. One of the most painful things about growing up is the realization that you will never see another game like this again. God, yeah. So yeah, a bit of history about this game. SNK was pretty much, they knew that their goose was cooked, they were gonna go bankrupt. So Nazca decided to just throw absolutely everything they could in this game because they knew this would be the last one they'd ever make. Oh yeah, this is actually pretty close to that era. I forgot. You're not using the D button. Why not make Metal Slug Attack the D button? <laughs> I know, it's just, they actively point out that they're not using it. It's like, come on. Uh. I like they made their characters look as goofy as possible for the character select. Like, every one of them just looks fucking dopey as shit. That's Nazca for you. Uh, so yeah, we're already starting with crab people. Yeah. Uh, so this game has a strange emphasis on monster enemies that are slower, but take a lot more hits to kill, which kind of makes this game feel strangely more slow-paced. Yeah. Also, this attack. And, and also you're rescuing crabs from the crabs? Regular crabs from mutant crab <laughs> people. I'm guessing those things in the background are like their spaceship or something? Oh god, I didn't even notice that. There's a lot of details like, in these backgrounds, too, if you really look. There's no explanation as to why there are crab people. So, you can go down there into an underwater stage, or up here, for, uh, okay, apparently we're going down, okay. Okay, this guy teased the hell out of me. I thought he was, like, going the fast route. And... Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I was like, I really wasn't sure still. <laughs> They're playing with our hearts, man. <laughs> so, yeah, this... Also, we're detail about the POWs in the underwater segments, over time they turn blue. Oh yeah! I guess to convey that there's oxygen deprivation going down, but it doesn't explain how they were able to just be down here this whole time. <laughs> I like how all these eels have names, by the way. Would you like to give a nickname to the eel you just caught? Oh god, I forgot nope. these things were actually in this stage, because these are, uh, these jellyfish are unused sprites in the four, I think, or five. There's a lot of unused sprites in those games. Yeah. So drop shot. That weapon's useless. <laughs> we might but... not see it, but God, that's a lot of talk about. Born so yeah, there's the stage actually has three different ways you can beat it, and we're seeing just like this one. Like you actually don't see most of the stage in this path, but I well, I guess yeah. that's not true because this is really just its own stage, I guess. So apparently we're close to the center of the earth here. Yeah? So yeah, this game has like branching paths for added replay value, which is awesome. Yeah. Although I always take the same paths, so I actually am not familiar with this one at all. I tend to take the faster routes when I can to minimize my coin usage. So that would be, yeah, the upper path and then the, the one with the, uh... It's like that area that plays, like, the alien ship music, I think. I think that's the fastest route. Yeah. I always take the one with the boats, just because it's, uh, I find that one easier. Also, you get the best slug at the end of the boat one. Yeah, for sure. You just get, like, a metal slug, but it's, like, faster. And as opposed to what you get here, which is the, uh, the walker one, which is, as we've noted, is pretty easy to accidentally just blow up. I guess this path is technically easy, too, if you know what you're doing, because you're in a submarine, and they are not afraid to give you fuel canisters in this level. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's also the longer route. I always dislike this path just because there already is, like, a dedicated water level, so I feel like we already kind of got our fill from that, but, I mean, I guess that's one of the nice things about this game, you just play it however you want it to, really. Or however you want yep. it to. I have a lot of questions as to how that type of gun works. <laughs> yeah. I got these, like, bullets with gravity that you got as well. Our magneto ammo. Oh god, what the hell? 
Uh, take your pick quickly. Person just wants their enemy chaser in the event they somehow accidentally do the metal slug attack. <laughs> Passing on through. Oh god, it looks so good. You gotta remember they're oh, working with like a limited color palette too, but Yeah. So yeah, um jokes about giant enemy crabs are often made about this game because the first level is just a lot of that. Pretty much. And even as a Giant crab, I can't imagine that weapon being particularly comfortable for it to wear. I love this boss is usually brought up when they talk about like the great animations in Metal Slug, but what's kind of funny about it is it is a great looking sprite, but it's also just one animation. Oh, there we go. And I guess there's a little more to it. I think there's one. If there's one enemy that's a great example of the animation, it's going to be the fly enemies that, or grasshoppers or whatever, that you could have seen in one path of this level. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a lot going on with that thing at once. I guess it's actually like a hermit crab, because it's just, instead of a, a shell, it's got, um, the shit. <laughs> and I don't think there's any explanation for it either, it's just... Yeah, there's just a giant hermit crab that's got... Big tank on its back. I don't. Yeah, it's like the whole series is just things exist. Also, I don't know all the names of the bosses, but I know they have like really goofy names. And then I'll list I don't remember Jupiter them. Queen. Yeah. That much wrong. Jupiter King and uh, the Ten Commandments. Oh yeah, that's a interesting one. <laughs> Oh boy. I think this is also an alternate version of the walker, because I think it's like it moves faster to make up for the fact that you're constantly running away from it. Yeah. Like it's a different color too. Yeah. Oh we also the okay. bombs instead of the bombs just shooting straight down, they uh they're like little running guys. Yeah. We didn't notice that they already used those up. Oh god, yeah. You're kind of distracted by the thing that you're running from. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Also, I think the running bombs are actually, if you have a, a fat character and the drop shot, they're just those things instead. I think it is. Oh, no, it's Iron Lizard. Never mind. That's what it is. Yeah. Mission complete! You're not going to see much Iron Lizard in like these playthroughs, because it's not that great of a weapon. No, but I do love it. It's just like, you kind of drop it, and then it just like bolts across the screen. Okay, welcome to probably the most famous level in the series history. Yeah, pretty much. I might have like named a channel after it or something. <laughs> you might not recognize it from the icon, and uh, the fact that it's named after the song that plays in the stage. So, so yeah, um, just like the mummies, if you get hit by those things, acid spits, you turn into a zombie yourself. You become slow as hell, and you can't use anything but the handgun. But you cannot die from gunfire. You can die from getting puked on or hit by like a monster attack, but not from soldier gunfire. Also, instead of a bomb, you do like this huge blood vomit that just wrecks everything in an arc in front of you. Yeah, it's like a kaiju laser made of blood. It's fucking insane. And, um... I will say, I to get into some nerdy history, uh... A long time ago, I saw this game at an arcade at, like, a skating rink or something. I didn't have any coins to play it, but I just kind of sat there and watched the attract mode, which had featured this level in it, and I was just kind of fascinated by it. And it really probably triggered my fascination with zombies throughout high school. <laughs> so this is a pretty pretty important stage for me. It, it just I was I thought it was the coolest shit growing up. The and, extremely rare thundercloud power up. Yeah, I think it's like the one thing you can use while you're a zombie, but it's not exactly. Yeah. 
that great. Also, there's a it's monkey. Not, it's not really a weapon. It's, I guess, just kind of like an option from a shooter game. Yeah, pretty much. So, I would normally be a zombie at this point, just Same. so that I can no sell all these and then clear out these helicopters in the blink of an eye. Yeah. Of course, uh, you'd have to watch out they throw zombies in there as well to uh, keep it on your toes. Also, the uh, the doctor zombies always drop a cure. Yeah, you can cure being dead. <laughs> like, I've always found this this whole thing like the fact that whenever someone turns to a zombie, they get struck by lightning, which is a weird touch. Um, I'm guessing it might be a reference to Frankenstein. Oh, maybe yeah. Oh, hey, we're gonna... Oh, we're gonna see this, or are we just doing the POWs? I remember these guys. I don't like doing this path alone. I love this path. Like, I always do this just because it's, uh... It's fun. It's tough. I do now. this in co-op, but not alone, because... The second half of this part is really, really frustrating to do when you're alone. So, yeah, there's two paths there. You can keep going right, which is, like, this really short segment that's just more of the level. And then you can go in here, which is, like, a stupidly long like, segment where you basically just end up where you started. Also, another thing, you can get frozen, turn into a snowman. You can do Sub-Zero's friendship. <laughs> also, I, I already- I blinked, I think we missed it. You can also rescue, uh, some of Morden soldiers, and they just, like, kind of salute you and head off. Yeah. But they don't give you anything, because, you know, Morden affiliation. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want anything from them anyway. Here, have the shitty bottle rocket. Let it aid you upon your journey. Also, yeah, always focus on the ones that are on your floor level. Those are the only ones that can actually kill you. Yeah, so if you're frozen, they can run up and hit you with, like, this melee attack where they pull just, like, a big bone and whack you with it, but if you're not frozen, they won't do it, usually. I mean, it'll still kill you if you get out, and but not in time to escape it, but they will only do it when you're frozen. Yeah. Here's Iron oh, Lizard. we get to see Iron Lizard. It's just a weird rocket, really. I always dismissed Iron Lizard in this particular screen as, like, a trap. Oh, right, because of the guys up there. You can still hit them, but they're they're weird. Also, <laughs> just the fridges. Fridges that are not connected to anything, but still inexplicably can cool. Okay, that was a slick dodge. Yeah. I got pretty good at the screen because I basically forced myself to play it. Just because I was like, eh, it would be too easy to take, you know, the easy path. If I'm on my game, I can get up to the third boss without using a continue. I was, my, I forget if I told you this, my biggest goal was in, uh, at one point in my life was to try to get to, like, the first four missions without dying. And I was able to do it, like, not at once, but I was able to beat, like, every stage, like, multiple times without dying, but just never in one run did I ever get just, like, all four of the first stages without dying. It was always, there's always, always something that goes wrong either on the second boss or the fourth boss for me. There's a lot of RNG in this game, so you're basically rolling a lot of dices. Yeah. And there's a lot of room for error. I didn't play it on hard either, which, uh, I was never great at the game, but I did, you know... I'm playing on level 4 constantly. I don't want to imagine boss 4 <laughs> on hard 8. Well, I'm gonna have to imagine, but... Oh my god. Yeah, so there's still some lag in this game too, but uh... It's a little more understandable with how much shit they've got on screen. God, look at all these sparkles. Yeah... And honestly, it's not anywhere as bad as 2, so... Oh, yeah, all this shit, and it's not as, like, sub-optimized as 2 is. <laughs> like, they go out of their way with this game, and it still runs more fluidly than 2. Yeah, they gotta... It's this crazy thing where, like, you have to break open these walls while constantly being bombarded by these guys. Or you could just That's kill them. That's one of the reasons I hate doing this screen alone. Yeah. It's nasty, for sure. But then, like, the end of this half, things get really, like, I need a friend. 
This is actually the area I've uh, used the iframes from jumping off a slug the most. But, uh, it's not from a tank. There's just... There's just an elephant buried in the ice. An elephant metal slug. Yeah... Also, all those Yetis you killed earlier now have been eaten. That's ominous. Oh, here's why. <laughs> so yeah, you can actually run over the zombies, but you are still vulnerable to their attacks up there. And now there and then, are these, um... Coat guys? I forget what they're called. Like, Tarmen, I think they're called? Yeah, they're called Tarmen. They're named after the zombie from Return of the Living Dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. They shoot, like, a big, like, wave of vomit at you. And they have, like, a million HP. Yeah. This, oh. is the, this whole screen is the big reason why I don't like doing this alone. And because if you go you under them, they fall on top of you and explode. Yeah, like, I, you're just, you need to have the patience of a saint to get past the screen, because you're going to be abusing iframes for dear life to not get zombified and thus lose the elephants. But on top of that, you also have enemies that have, like, tank levels of HP up there. Another weird thing is, um, you, you might have missed it, he picked up a battery with the elephant, and the elephant just, like, ate it, and it changed the bomb effect to be, instead of just the uh, airy throwing a bomb, the, the elephant shoots a giant laser <laughs> out of its trunk. Yeah, it also has fire. Yeah, there's just, randomly it'll give you fire instead of laser. It's weird. But, um, and also using the laser is pretty key to, uh, getting through here. Like, use your bomb on the ground enemies, and then shoot the, uh, upwards enemies. Like, yeah. I've done this so many times, I've actually, I find it honestly not that hard, but it definitely took I some just, learning. I find it tedious more than hard. Yeah, for sure. I can see like, that. your progress is constantly, like, being hindered by the fact that you're, like, jumping on and off an elephant over and over while dealing with two threats on top and below you. I mostly use the, uh, the elephant to, like, blow away everything in the bottom and then just kind of, like, watch out for the stuff on top, because you can kind of bypass it unless you really want to kill everything. You just have to watch out if they uh, do anything tricky, because they, they're they pretty tricky enemies, because they can, they have, like, you know, multiple attacks and things you. I mean, I guess they have to earn their Tar Man namesake, because that was, like, the smartest zombie in Return of the Living Dead. And then, yeah, we're back out here. So that took several minutes. I think the other path would have taken, like, maybe 30 seconds to get to this point. Okay, soldier zombies. Yeah. This person gets you enough to actually fight them. I, I guess, just jump. Yeah, because they, they do this, like, kind of uh, kamikaze attack where they just jump at you. And, uh... He's killing the doctor zombies instead of letting himself get zombified. Yeah. He is confident. Honestly, it's, like, that's kind of a, a double-edged sword, though, because you can't dodge these attacks when you're a zombie, so you have to kill them. Otherwise, you're That's why... I lure one near me so that I can have a med kit to immediately switch into. I think that's a speedrun tech, yeah. I think. It's my tech, at least. Yeah. Okay. I barf, take out as many as I can, turn to human, grenade the rest. This is usually where I use a, lose a life, by the way. These, these attacks are insane. It is very RNG. This is, yeah, where the first damage into my attempt at a one clear run happens. So this is now, the, this boss, the Ten Commandments. Is, the Ten Commandments of Moses. It's a pushover. If you lose a life to this boss, we're going to have to have a talk. Yeah. It gets a little tricky, mostly because, like, when you're down to your pistol, you probably are going to hurt your hands mashing, but... Yeah, there, fatigue is a factor. Although, I'm used to playing this on my Vita, and it's really... Its controller is just really nicely designed. Can I point out before we get through this, because we're getting through this real quickly, uh, this level has a lot of, like, you know, very subtle storytelling in it, where, like, a lot of the stuff you're walking on in the beginning of the level is, like, a plane crash, and it may or may not have been caused by all this alien stuff that has been, like, you know, there's, like, a meteor that crashed here, and they're investigating it, but then, you know, zombies popped up, and it possibly was, like, you know, the people who died in the plane crash. Yeah, um, I like your way of thinking. I, that's honestly how I read it. It's like, I thought, like, the meteor caused the crash, and then somehow the aliens were involved in actually raising all the dead. Yeah, like, I guess, yeah, that is a way to put it. I just thought it was just, like, a bunch of sci-fi horror stuff. But maybe maybe I'm looking too out. far into it, but, I mean, I don't know. It, 
I mean, with old Japanese games, I wonder how far you can look into it. Yeah. Because there has to be, like, a notion, like, a logic that they were going for. I mean, this isn't D2, but still. Yeah. That's why I love this level so much. There's just so much to it for what is what really could have been just, like, a minute-long arcade game yeah. level. Like, it's a really thought-provoking level, like... This is why this is the most famous level in the series. It is a masterpiece. And just like the mechanic of the zombies, which is like a thing they really didn't have to do, but it adds so much by just being so unique. Like, what other game can you think of where you can, like, die and become a zombie? Like, get Resident punished. Resident Evil Outbreak? I mean, like, get punished from, you know, take getting hit by an enemy by being turned into a zombie. And then just kind of, like, a chug, like chugging it off with, you know, a med kit. Or just embracing your newfound power. Yeah, because it's like a downgrade, except it also has, you know, that attack that we sadly didn't get to see, but... Yeah, it has its uses. In fact, that is the level 2 super in Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. Yeah. Remember that, There's just, they actually made it a super move of Marco's. This person is ignoring the enemy chase. Okay, never mind. <laughs> just saving it, I guess. Like... If I were playing, I would just be like, enemy chaser! Ah! So this stage has also got three pathways, I'm not sure which one I'm going to see. I always go down there. Anything to... The ostrich part is, like, really hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. I guess this player didn't want to exercise their skill to make us see the ostrich. Like, like, you can't you know... do all secret in this game because you can't see all the paths in one run. But, you know. You would think, like, they already chose, like, the submarine path on the first level. They would just choose something else to mix things up. Yeah. Also, I love you can die here, by the way. You can actually miss that jump, and I've done it, and that made me sad. <laughs> they chose this path just to show off these secrets. Jeez. Oh, God! Come on! Nazca, I hate you. <laughs> Why are you doing this to us, Nazca? <laughs> You're tearing me apart, Nazca! Oh my god. I was half expecting another one to be in the I thought I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> there was probably something else up there, but they didn't mean to fall on this up, and they did. <laughs> oh yeah, this is, a, this is a banger too, hard water. Okay. Yeah, also the easiest path. Oh, for sure. This is the one I choose for my attempts at getting as far as I can on one continue. So I think the second path is you keep going right in the uh, first section and then you get to another tunnel that takes you to a land area where you have an ostrich slug. And uh, it's really fucking hard. And then yeah. the third path is like you just keep, you stay in that first area for a good while and it just takes you straight to the boss, I think. Um, it takes you to... Oh, the All next three section. of them lead to like this one kind of stealth area. I can't wait to get it's, to that. It's interesting. I love that area of death, too. But, uh... Yeah, this is a little more of the same from what we saw on the first stage, but... You know, it's cool. I'm yeah. Gu I'm guessing they didn't actually have a, a graphical effect for that background, so that's also just, like, rotating sprites? Yeah, they're animating, like, the rippling water effects. Oh, my God. These spriters are something else. Yeah. Like, having spriters like these is why SNK was, like, so reluctant to change hardware, even though at this point it was emulated. So this section... I realized what I was going to so, say about it is going to get kind of ruined by the way this person's playing it, but, um... It's a stealth section. The fact that you can do that in an arcade game is just, like, a testament to really good level design. Yeah. What I love most about this stage is the music, like, kind of builds up, and it kind of works with uh, how you run through it if you're running through it normally and not taking the time to destroy everything like this person is. Because <laughs> you'll see, like, the background get a little more intense as it goes to uh, deeper in the base, and that usually kind of syncs up with how the music gets a little more intense. Yeah, like, the stage is designed in the way that if you want to, you can sneak past all these hazards. Yeah. Because they have a limited range of view, and 
the silver spheres you can just duck under. I call them silver spheres like they're that thing in Phantasm. <laughs> I mean, they referenced Tarman from Return of the Living Dead, so why not? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You know, that would be something if Tarman was licensed as a killer in Dead by Daylight. <laughs> oh, man. Anytime he spots a survivor, you just keep hearing him say, Brains! <laughs> this part is, uh kind of tricky though because you got all these guys with shields blocking for the guys who have all the guns that's where i mash the hell out of the grenade button because that immediately knocks their shields away oh yeah yeah like this is probably if you're going the easy route the hardest part of this level yeah for sure because also we have these foreground elements that are really distracting yeah also, that heat wave effect in the background. God, I love this game. This is nothing like anyone has seen before and hasn't seen since. Yeah. Like, this is an artistic marvel. So yeah, the, me the next Metal Slug game was, uh, what is it, Playmore? Or, uh... Um, um, Noise Factory, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. There it's with, um... You know, after SNK went under, and, uh... It's, um... It's not they can't measure up to this, so they had to reuse as much assets as possible. Yeah. Also, yeah, this part, you really, really want to treat your Metal Slug, or Mech Slug, with care, because it will trivialize this upcoming boss. Oh yeah, it can use the, uh, the weapons you pick up here as well. It is the one slug with limited ammo, which is another reason why you have to be really careful with this thing. Oh, that's right, because you don't have anything. Like, once you're out of ammo, it doesn't do anything anymore, aside from your bombs, but, yeah. Thank you. There you go. That's the best way to deal with those guys. Yep. I love how we're, like, agreeing with this person's straps, because <laughs> both of us have tried to do 1ccs of this. Oh, yeah. I've never gone up here, though. Which I guess is explains how you're supposed to get these guys. Um, I knew how to get up here, but I was more concerned with trying to preserve the mech slug. Yeah. yeah I don't see it firing downwards very often. That would be the one spot you would only... Yeah. Like, okay, if you do not have the mech slug, this boss is a bitch. But if you do have it, it's easy. Yeah, learning to fight this guy without a slug is, uh... Yeah, so this is Jupiter King? I just want to point out that its name is Jupiter's King. Yeah, there's no forgetting that name. It is <laughs> awesome. Also, it's a oddly cute robot. Yeah. I'm sure there's a plush of this thing. <laughs> So yeah, it's got a bunch of just like kind of sweeping attacks where, yeah, it redirects you underneath the, uh, well, I'll let you do that. It redirects you to the left there, underneath that missile, and then you have to like, dodge the way out of that missile. It's, uh... So, yeah, this boss seems to have a fairly predictable pattern right now. As its health gets lower and it gets more desperate, it has much less cooldown between these attacks, so you have to dodge multiple attack patterns at the same time. Yeah... Like, without the slug, you better be really good at multitasking. Which is why this boss is an absolute asshole without the slug. <laughs> oh yeah, also when that missile is sticking out of its stomach, you can actually jump on it. It's like a platform. I mean, anything to help you dodge all this crap. <laughs> Imagine, these homing missiles with the firebombs raining down on you with its eye laser all coming at you at once. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why God created iframes. <laughs> and to think, I've beaten this boss several times without it. This is, this is one of those games where, like, it's so hard that whenever you actually do something in it without dying, it's like the most rewarding feeling ever. This game's not fair, let's <laughs> be real. No. So yeah, if you manage to, like, 
defeat their bullshit. It feels great. Yeah, eventually it gets to a point where you cannot really dodge that eye laser casually. I also think some parts of that boss are different colors depending on if you have the blood enabled. So remember, like, its head and that little, like, nuclear symbol is, like, red. Hmm, I gotta try that. that I remember, yeah, it was just something weird going on there. And now the boss became a lot less cute. Yeah. Mission four, start. Okay, um, this can either be a breather level, or this can be your worst nightmare, depending on which route you take. Yeah, the hardest section for me is actually out here in the beginning. Just because there's a... Uh, mostly because you're in um, a slug that doesn't uh, give you any protection, but that's also if you're not abusing half frames correctly. I find this fairly straightforward for a soldier segment. It's one of the routes that you can take where things really hit the fan. Yeah, I always take uh, the, uh, the route that I find pretty easy. But that actually depends. Like there, There's like four different routes in this level, I think. Yeah. So you can go up the mountain into just a big mountain area with like a different bugs and stuff that leads to the boss. Uh, you can go up the mountain into like a mummy area. They actually bring back the mummy enemy. Uh, you can go inside and then straight forward to the Japanese soldiers, which I I want to see. That's the them. hard route. That is the hardest route. It's really funny. I actually really hope we see it, but it's also just like a pain in the ass. Also, it's so weird to see, like, a Japanese game stereotype itself like that. Yeah. Then again, there's Punch-Out, where, yeah, they they don't only stereotype foreigners, but also themselves. <laughs> like, equal opportunity stereotyping. I don't know, I feel like there's sometimes Americans like, yeah, we, we know who we're about. I think I've seen mm -hmm. it. I mean, we only have multiple Dead Rising bosses that are basically that. <laughs> That's true. Except they were written by Canadian people. <laughs> Speaking of, I didn't really get to appreciate, like, in the uh, the Punch-Out video, like, for the Punch-Out Wii one, they, like, up the stereotype of the Canadian character to, like, hilarious extremes. And I didn't realize at the time that the game was made in Canada. Oh, Canadians love doing that. <laughs> they have embraced the meme. That's that's great. I love it. Like, as somebody who is friends with multiple Canadians, I can attest, they do not mind that. In fact, they embrace it. Quick shout out to the, uh, the footstep uh, thing they did with the sand back there. Oh, yeah. Nice effect. So, yeah, there's like another the... path that I usually take down here, and we might see it. This is also where... Oh, yeah, so these things. Also, yeah, Morden has his own, like, brand of wine. All right, yeah. That he has weird plant demons guarding. <laughs> oh, yeah, and these little, like, pollen spore things that, if they touch you, you, you get eaten by tentacles? Um, yeah, tentacles grow from under you. They just karama you. Yeah. Oh, so that the guy, if you don't... If you're not careful, he will eat you, and then you'll spawn behind him, and you can't go down that path. Which is the easy path, and we're heading towards the hard one. Oh, boy. I have... I still have, like, nightmares about these things because of Metal Slug 7. There's a trial where you have to go through a screen with a lot of these things without using shooting weapons, only melee. Oh, god. Yeah. Yeah, so the bottom path has, like, this weird, like, everything's covered in, like, slime, and there's just, like, maggots everywhere and stuff. I actually really like that path, and it, it also has my favorite slug, the drill slug. Yeah, that's the path I always take. But no, this person's hardcore. So, yeah, there's the stereotype I'm only half familiar with because of this game, where there were just these Japanese soldiers who, like, hid themselves underground and didn't realize that the war was over. Yeah. And, and that's all these guys. <laughs> They're just a bunch of weirdos who are just hiding out and they're fighting a war that doesn't exist. I just want to know how the POWs got under there. <laughs> Like, okay. oh, yeah. did they, are they like, um, the war is over, then they just get captured or something? What a 
are they saying? I think just generic grunts. Uh. They have they have all these unique attacks and stuff. Like this whole section is just about them. They have all this crazy stuff, and I like never get to see it because this path sucks. Yeah. Also, this is like the only part in the series history where you get to fight them. Yeah, yeah. The only time they ever crop up, like not in the later games, use them. Even Metal Slug 4, which was basically like Metal Slug the ROM hack, does not include these people. Yeah. I love their tanks. Like, oh my god. A lot of archaic technology that still is held together better than modern stuff. <laughs> It's just kind of like, what? Oh, oh, right, yeah, and some of the food, like, goes bad if you don't pick it up fast enough. Those attentions... Be imagine being fat during this part of this... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, I yes. would have panic attacks here. Right, I forgot, so they rain down bullets, and you have to actually use the platforms to block them. Although, apparently we're waiting for another POW or something. Or not? Okay. Burning calories with stabs. <laughs> Just waiting for the effect to wear off because fuck this. Got that burn animation though. Yeah. They have, oh yeah, they have multiple kinds. The way they just turn into ash, yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just flying these stupid planes that just run into a wall. I say flying them, they're actually just on, you know, online. <laughs> it's ill-advised kamikaze attack. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, shout out to the POW doing the little calling animation, like, hey! I'm you would here. think, you would think, like, um, I don't know, uh, maybe gag them or something? <laughs> Actually, I just realized that, yeah, like, they got one arm free, and they're just like, hey! It feels my theory that these were just people paid to be prisoners. <laughs> they just collected a bunch of hobos and then gave them fake military names just to look credible. <laughs> what is this stupid shit? Did you just tear that man into pieces with the fork? <laughs> he actually disintegrated. Hokuto fork stab. <laughs> The Mortal Kombat pork attack. <laughs> the most annoying things about these is the red ones that hold up dynamite after they die. So you're just constantly moving to not get killed. Here comes some gratuitous whipping. Uh, oh wow, we're running out of time. I thought for a moment this person was trying to do like the back and forth shooting strategy oh, because if you turn... You can shoot faster. Oh, huh. Okay, this boss, or the end of your one credit clear. Yeah, yeah. It's that one attack, honestly. This one's easy, but the yellow version, no. The yellow version is pray to God. The yellow version is, hey, do you like shmups? With randomness? Oh, God, yeah. It's just like a mask, and it has these, like, ghost wolf projectiles. You know, as a kid, I always thought they were dolphins. <laughs> I guess I could kind of see that. Nowadays, they're like, oh, they're just spirit wolves. <laughs> oh, just boring spirit wolves. It's that guy from Voltage Fighter Gao Kaiser's familiar. <laughs> oh, Fortunately, yeah. it doesn't turn into a tit lady. There's also the laser attack, which of course we won't be seeing what it does. Oh my god, this. I yeah. hate this move so much. Yeah. It is randomness, if it, you can dodge that or not. It's also in rage mode right now, I turn red, so all of its attacks are stronger. And it has this attack, yeah, this attack, where it just sweeps most of the stage with that laser. 
If you get hit by that, you get turned into coins, and then you can pick them up when you revive. Or the other person can pick them up. Yeah, it's like you can get points off of your death, which is... Like, that is such a cool attack concept. Just get gilded into pieces. Oh no, not again. <laughs> I tense the hell up whenever I see this attack, even when I'm not playing. I really should have had, like, the page up for the bosses so I can read what their names are. This one's like, it's like Walker or something like that. I just call it Son of a Bitch. I always just thought it was like a giant mask, but I don't know it's what a, it is, really. It's like an, a weaponized ornament. Yeah? I wait for all the different POWs that can pop up. Great. It is. I don't know if this is something that, like, Morton's army fixed up, or if this was, like, some ancient temple guard. I think you can say that a lot about what you fight in Metal Slug 3. It's just like, is this Morton's doing, or did it just happen? I mean, keeping in mind that in this game, already we've established a second race of aliens from the Mars people? Yeah! And spoilers, we're gonna be seeing the actual Mars people later, so they're just two different brand of aliens. Seeing somebody kill this boss without dying just blows my mind. Yeah. I know I've done it, but again, not in a all-in-one uh, run. Oh, I like man. the mixture of, like, developer names and Greek mythology names, like Ganymede and Athena. Mission. Yeah? I really appreciate the fact that you, you don't even shoot, like, that thing. You shoot the gym in its forehead. Oh, yeah. Pick your slug. Mission five, start. So... Final mission is kind of a typo. <laughs> it should be final missions. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. So this is three missions. Like it actually has like bosses that separate the different missions, but it's just called one mission for some bizarre reason. So from what I according to the interview, like they thought this would be like the last Metal Slug game they'd ever make, so for the final mission, they just threw every goddamn idea that they had <laughs> at the time. I guess unlike the other missions, this one is at least connected. Like, there's not, like, any weird transitions. Like, it's all straightforward, but... Yeah, there is a narrative. They could have still split it up into different missions. Oh, and by the way, yeah, Morton's soldiers exist. Not that it would have made any difference, it would just been a lot more honest if it was like, by the way, this is mission 5 of 8. Yeah. At least, like, give you a chance to, I don't know, rest your arms? <laughs> because you're going to be hitting buttons a lot. Oh yeah, so this... There's a weird island fight here, I forgot about that. They were on motorcycles before that, so they just suddenly were able to stop all momentum to burn alive. <laughs> Alright, yeah, this fish has a lot of, like, references to the first game, and it took me a while to realize it. Oh, yeah. Like, first game retelling, sort of. Mm. Nostalgia trip. I mean, they felt that this was going to be the last game, so I guess they might as well just... Yeah. Nostalgia. It's Imagine amazing. if you could somehow make the slug fat. <laughs> Whoa. It's amazing how far they came with just three games. Like, two sequels in, and it's, like, already kind of nostalgic for itself. Like, every sequel, they just... They really take the term sequel seriously. Yeah? We're gonna make it bigger. This mission certainly is big. Yeah, we're like halfway through this according to the time bar. And it's all gonna be this one mission. Wait, what? Oh my god! 
Yeah! <laughs> this mission is over 30 minutes long. This mission is half the video! Yes. Oh my god. I'm glad watching this playthrough has given me the chance to appreciate that. I say appreciate with the utmost sarcasm in this game. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, that plane from the first game with uh, Alan in it. I mean, he still does Alan things, he's just on top of a plane. Yeah, you don't really get to fight him directly, it feels like. I mean, you do get to see him fight other people directly later on. Oh, right! I forgot about that, actually. Also, yeah, he drops his machine gun. Which still just counts as a heavy machine gun. Yeah. You just kind of convert it down to a smaller one. That, like, shotgun yeah, that fires out bullets for whatever reason. Man, they're really good at weapon modding. <laughs> so yeah, here's this turret, and here's the final boss from one. Final boss one remix. So yeah, you just get to hear this guy vomit all day. <laughs> yeah. And the only thing that can stop you is that machine gun. And to which you can just counter by eye framing. Yeah, eye frames are Definitely, uh, I learned how to do them, uh, I think, through this fight. Because you get a lot of use out of them here, too. I would say it's almost like a fake-out thing that they do with it. Like, oh, hey, it's, you know, here's the final boss. It's like, oh, wow. Yep, that was the final mission, all right. Yeah, they wanted what comes next to be a surprise. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to give it more... away. It's actually, like, 45 minutes of credits from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> Like, in an actual arcade, though, like, what happens next is kind of a surprise. Yeah? And boy, do they have surprises in store for you, starting with how many levels are after this. Uh. Oh my god. Oh god, what the fuck? Difficulty 8. Oh my god. I remember that. I don't remember the machine gun doing that, though. I think that's only for the higher difficulties. Oh my god, they definitely amped this one up. I love how we just went from the shock at how easy Metal Slug is, Metal Slug 1 was on difficulty 1, and then difficulty 8, this otherwise, like, pushover boss is like, instant machine gun. <laughs> His pyramid head's line attack. <laughs> you get tormented in addition to losing your life. <laughs> Alright, well, game over. That was pretty good. Oh shit. I like the eye badge. I just realized this, the video is labeled as like, oh yeah, airy gameplay. It's like, no, she got kidnapped. You can't play as her anymore. Yeah, I. Play, this is where I switch away from Theo. Yeah. Just so that I can continue to be Theo. <laughs> I think there's like precedence too for like multiplayer scenarios. I think it always like gravitates towards Theo first. I thought it was just whoever if, player one was. If Theo is like in the group. <laughs> I, I think it goes Theo, then Marco, then Tarma, then Aerie. So that was an animation sequence that they did for really no reason, but that's why I love them. I mean, that gives me some um, breathing room for my fingers. That, that's auto-fire. There's no way you're firing that fast for this thing. Put down the turbo controller. Suffer like we did. Yeah. Oh, well. So if you feel like shmups, um... We got him. <laughs> And again, there's all that space battling stuff going on in the background. Also, yeah, I think the majority of my PlayStation Vita's wear and tear is gonna come from this game. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely emulated uh, some Neo Geo games on my PSP just to play Metal Slug. 
interesting. This is uh, this area is actually a lot of callbacks to two. I didn't realize until recently. A lot so, of asset use from two, yeah. This is like the the fights going on in the background, the fact that there's the aliens, and um, the fact that the well, what we're about to come up on. Yeah, I guess yeah. This is kind of just a retrospective of the series. Yeah, which is interesting. I never really thought of it that way, but. I mean, looking back on the work they have done before SNK's not-so-great business decisions led Nazca to an early death. Oh god, the lighting on those uh, meteors when you're hitting them. Bright work is something else. Ridiculous. The one area you actually want to avoid the shotgun because of its what range. Yeah. But then again... It does get rid of those asteroids fairly quick. I remember it can be kind of dangerous to destroy all the asteroids because those parts can, like, crush you. And if you have too many on screen, you might not have a way to get out, but... You also need a way to, like, create a gap for you to squeeze through. Yeah, it usually just, like, break one and then squeeze through there. Every choice has a consequence. <laughs> oh yeah, this part with all the uh, destroyed shit in the background. A lot of destroyed metal slugs. Yeah. Also a destroyed person. Yeah, there's some just some dudes. That's graphic. <laughs> and then the Morden soldier stopped thinking. <laughs> so here's um here's these things. The kind the of The first form of the final boss of the second game. The times two. <laughs> yeah, two of them, just because. I'll say this section feels a little padded out mostly because you destroy those two things and then up, here's another one. A lot of this final mission is just, okay, we get it. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's probably the thing about it. It's not only that it's long, but there's a lot of parts that feel like they're, they're really trying to squeeze some uh, time out of you. Yeah. <laughs> just to be a little critical of the game. But it is an arcade game, what are you going to do? Yeah, like, that's the one complaint I have with this game, is the ending fatigue. Yeah, it does, like, it's, you know, I, I appreciate them trying to make a lot out of uh, a little, but it feels like this game just, at one point you're just like, oh god, I'm just tired. No, you must see what Nazca can do. You must remember it all. <laughs> oh, I do. So yeah, there's the final loss from 2, just kind of a quick little thing. Okay, I thought that was, like, emulator text. No, that was actually, like, the video watermark. Oh, yeah. So, we talk about padding. We we're gonna go up this thing for, like, ten minutes. Yeah, this is probably mostly where my complaints lie, is this section. Easily the worst section this level. Not because it's hard, but because it's just so unnecessarily long. Yeah... I guess the other complaint I have with this game, too, is the emphasis on monster enemies that take a lot of hits to kill just make the game feel less frantic, but more slower and methodical. Yeah, although I think that might have something to do with uh, the problems they face in 2, where they had way too many weak enemies on screen and uh, their lags yeah. or their uh, frame rate suffered from it. Yeah. But then they'll do some pretty crazy stuff here, too, so... I don't know. Like, I remember there's one part where they send, like, ten of these UFO foes at you at once. <laughs> and they're not, like, simple sprites either. Like, look at the rotating ring. Yeah. And then, you know, appropriate with the uh, level with this music, uh, much like the train where you had to mash destroy before you got crushed, uh, you have these falling wall things. I forgot about this! I like oh, yeah, ever see this. The it's problem like, is, you have to kill the enemy that's holding it, which is hard to do because these things just immediately bugger off after shooting you a few times. Yeah. Almost it wasn't good enough to keep the uh, space slug through all, the, all this, but... That too. I have seen it before, it just very rarely. 
Yeah, what the are hell is these? Who are you? these things that just kind of slowly fall at you? It's their recyclables. Ah. Garbage day! <laughs> also, this kind of Giger looking background. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's the Halls of Death again. The only way out of here is death! <laughs> oh, oh wow. That was kind of cool. <laughs> God, they still do have a lot of stuff on screen between all the bullets you fire, all the lines of enemies, and all the bullets they fire. I guess that's why the background is just something in apparatus titled o tiled over and over. Oh, yeah. I don't want anything distracting you. <laughs> I thought all the formations you're getting with these, uh, Vulcans. Oh, there it is. Like, how many oh. of those guys was there? <laughs> It almost looked like an after-image effect. Yeah. Okay, finally, we're free. Oh, wait. Oh, right, I forgot there's a... If you don't have the uh, this space log, there's just like a missile that blows open a hole for you, but... Uh, Thank you. If you just have it, you just break on through. Attention to detail. Okay, so here are the not-Daleks. <laughs> oh, yeah, I never made that connection, but... Yeah. The Daleks with the huge brains. Mars attack, Daleks. <laughs> they got some very interesting attack patterns, too. Requiring you to dodge rather unconventionally. Yeah. This is my favorite SeaWorld exhibit. <laughs> Oh yeah, they have burning to death animations too. Oh yeah. I think every enemy does. Well, except for the mechanical enemies. Oh, of course. Yeah. It would be kind of weird to see a vehicle just writhe in agony as it burns. <laughs> they do it though. What was that one movie I saw where like a robot hit like a temple and it started bleeding? Japanese B movies or something else. <laughs> God, these things take a lot of hits. Just seems a level eight thing. I mean, even on level four, these things are kind of bulky. Yeah. I just, <laughs> they have little control sticks that they're moving with their own hands. So is this guy gonna follow you all the way to like? The final, final boss, I wonder. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. God, that would be weird. <laughs> God, these, like, oh. Geeker-esque backgrounds. So weird to see, like... Considering everything else we've seen so far, it's so weird to see these. So hey, it's the president. Also, yeah, he has he randomly has an Asian animation where his guys disappear, but he doesn't disappear with them, and he just kind of goes, ugh. I like that his agents are both Mr. Big. <laughs> oh yeah. Here we have the slightly tougher albino alien. Also, more Morton in his underwear for all you ladies out there. <laughs> I like going with the animation we saw earlier. He was already captured, they just had him, like, hanging out outside their ship for no reason. You know, putting up a front. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these backgrounds do not... They look a little weird, now that I think about it. Oh yeah, so, um... 
if you remember the mutants from the second game, which how could you forget? Um, well, here they have are. A, have a cuter variation. Yeah. Like, given all the other imagery in this level, it's kind of surprising they went with just the robots instead of mutant people. Yeah. Just really simple looking robots, too. Man, they throw a lot of magic. They were well aware of the fact that the mutants weren't very effective in the other game. Yeah. These are a lot faster, I noticed. Especially since it's Heart 8. And then we have them just throwing grenades. So they're also accommodating for the fact you're getting help. Oh, um, to answer if that guy follows you to the final boss, no. Because he hasn't followed you to the screen. Yeah? So this is a thing. I don't really know what, like, suddenly there's just, like, a different motif for the aliens where they have, like, spider robots that are cy uh, cyclopses. I, like, every idea that they just had, no matter if it meshes together or not. <laughs> also, when that thing breaks and then falls down, it can crush you, so... Your safest spot is standing under it until you break it, and then you gotta get out of the way. I have learned that the hard way. Yeah. I say hard, but, like, when you're playing the home versions, you don't have to worry about continues. Oh, wow. They just, I usually see that guy get blown up. So here's another interesting, like, option add-on thing. Although it has ammo. Actually, and you only see it in this level. Yeah, I mean, in the entire franchise's history, just this one level. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget if Thundercloud comes back too. I think it I'm does. Not sure if it does. I know four. Well, does if it did, it. yeah, it would probably be in four because that game's kind of a ROM hack. Yeah. Also, this thing does not last long enough for how brief its appearance is. Yeah. There's just some corpses. It's very Doom in that way. It's like Blood or Duke Nukem where you can, like, talk to these corpses. <laughs> that is one doomed space marine. <laughs> that is... I just love the little, like, desk lamp light that it adds on its head. It's like it's a spider <laughs> angler fished. It's important to remember a lot of the assets you're seeing because a lot of the stuff gets reused in later games. Yep. Or edited. Yeah. So here's the inside of uh, Nova from Kerber Superstar, I think. <laughs> I just like that this one soldier has been with us the whole time. He's, yeah, he's our new buddy. I'm glad we can have a one-player, two-player game. <laughs> oh god, the, um... The PlayStation 2 version of this game has a mode where you get to play as the soldiers. It's like, there's like four different soldiers you can play as. And like, not through the whole oh. game, but like, through, like, there's like this one level. Where you fight the aliens, where you get to play as some of the you have like the the minigun guy and like the shield guy. Yeah, they have. Also, they have like a that mini game where you like collect food. <laughs> also, there's the Xbox port where um. So we're looking at this level, right? Mm -hmm. So how long it is? The Xbox port has one limited continues, and two, if you use a continue. You start the entire level over. Oh god, like mission five? Yeah. From oh. the very, very first screen. Why? This is virtually unwinnable in the Xbox version. Why? Because fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, or maybe it does, like, start you at the beginning of the 
segment or the screen, maybe. That but still, Limited little... continues with this. Yeah. Oh god, why are we taking so long in this room? Anymore? We must get all the secrets. We're not getting secrets, though. We're just knifing spiders. We must get all the points. Ah. So yeah, you're supposed to shoot this wall that slides up, and every time you shoot it, it slides down a bit. But we're not going to do that, we're going to kill spiders. Also, it's funny how this game is, like, relatively fair compared to the first two, and then this level happens. So, yeah, here's Root Mars? The first version, yeah. This fight has one attack, technically two, and it's pretty annoying. It's a lot slower on difficulty for- oh no, Hibiki's oh. doing her level three. <laughs> it's actually the, the slowness of them that actually makes them kind of annoying. Because if you're not okay. careful, you can get yourself in a corner. Okay, the Xbox version, very beginning of the stage. Yeah. Oh, God. This game's unwinnable. Yeah, it is. Jesus. Okay, now we're getting really dark seed here with the background. I mean, and then here's the evil version of uh, Ari, who... So they start cloning her, and also they all drop eggs when you kill them? Yeah, the slime girl version of Ari. So, one thing I'm going to point out, and I don't want to point it out, but I will. Uh, some, including, including some of the death animations is like a melting one, which gets used a lot in like stage four, and the clones get it too. And, um, they got yeah. a little too in detail with the, the way that the female characters look when they die, when they melt. I mean, yeah, they show us plenty of guys in their underwear, but still. <laughs> It's like for the, the male characters, they just turn into skeletons, and for the female ones, their clothes just melts off, like, immediately. Japanese video game. Yeah. Just something I noticed over time, and just they kind of made me a little sad, but... I want you all to stand near your radio and get naked, and <laughs> melt into the floor. <laughs> I wonder if there's anybody, like, in existence that beat the Xbox version of Metal Slug 3. Someone has to have, but it wouldn't have been a fun experience. That person's probably in an institution. <laughs> the Mars people are coming, they're gonna undo our progress. We're gonna say it's like a, uh... Like a speedrunner sort of thing, but I think even speedrunners take deaths just occasionally. Yeah, they... I guess these clones aren't. They're just made of slime? Gee, there's something, alright. Or it's like the metal gear thing where it's like. Their genetics are like all fucked up and they just dissolve. I'm trying to figure out if they actually have unique sprites or not, because their eyes look a lot, like, more dead. I mean, I guess they're technically different sprites, they're not just palette edits. <sighs> Man. Then again, I, how I, I understand guess... arcade sprites, they only have to edit, like, certain parts and then just kinda impose that over. I mean, I guess... Maybe, like, the changes they made the irises white? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all the idle animation, though. Yeah, probably is like a straight edit, because I can't imagine, like, doing the all these animations again. Yeah. And not sprite edit, but palette. They probably color separated the eyes and stuff. Yeah. Still. Also, I'm so used to just seeing Marco in there that... I never saw Ares, like, capturing the tank animation and how relatively serene it looks. <laughs> yeah, they all, like, all have a unique sprite for that, I think. 
They do, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, there's certain attacks in the game that'll knock you over but won't kill you, and he uses that animation for getting up. Like, I think the Japanese tank, quote-unquote, if it runs into you, it won't actually kill you, but it just plays, like, this knockover animation. And if you mash buttons, they actually get up really quickly, and there's a unique animation for that, too. Okay, here, this is where things get <laughs> annoying, because their HP is, like, a million multiplied times, so and also... They realize how ridiculous their zombie thing was, so they made a thing where you fight the zombie players. I forgot At we least... actually will be seeing the, the blood attack, because... They can die to gunfire, at least. Yeah. Also, it just the, a lot of it. The zombie death animations for the players are also really bizarre. Because they just, like, start imploding. Like, I don't know what's going on there. I guess you're decomposing rapidly. It's a, like, that's, that death animation's really detailed. Like, there's a lot of frames in it for just some reason. This whole game has a lot of frames in it for some reason. Yeah. I guess maybe we're not gonna be seeing the blood vomit. <laughs> yeah, we keep killing him too fast. Like, normally I just use the, like, things for cover instead of just actually kill them. Yeah, yeah, it's not like a thing where if they get it off your dead, uh, you actually can take cover on those, uh, ramps. <laughs> got some points for something, I don't know. There we the go. Doll. Yeah, um, the player version of that just chews through everything. Yeah, the terrain isn't really, uh, it's... In the second level, it's set up to where you can just kill everything. In this one, it's set up to where you can take cover. Also, that sound effect, I love that sound effect, because it's in, like, everything. It's in, <laughs> it's in Doom. It's a stock roar, yeah. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it just, like, I know it's a stock sound, so that's why it's in everything, but just hearing it somewhere else, I'm just like, oh, hey, it's the zombie sound from Doom and this game. It's like hearing all the Sega games that have Battle Monsters voices. Yeah, right? <laughs> so normally you're supposed to, like, destroy those panels to open the door before, or, like, while fighting these things off, but... It looks like there's a finite amount, amount of them. I never even knew that. Yeah, same. I just go straight for the buttons. This is my genocide round in Metal Slug 3. <laughs> That's a hell of a lot more fun than the actual genocide run, I'll tell you that much. I loved it when Chara appeared in Metal Slug 3. <laughs> Like, that's not even just a knock on the game in general. Like, the actual Genocide Run looks, like, boring as fuck, like, on purpose. Yeah. It's just moral systems in games and how you just naturally are good just by going through the game, so you really just have to go out of your way to be evil. I don't know, but, cause it's, but it's also like, oh, well, the hard boss is in the Genocide Run, so it's like, okay, well, once you beat the game normally, you do the hard run. It's like, okay, sure. Why does the game have to be so fucking boring to get that? Fucking... I don't know. Why are we talking about Undertale? I have no idea. Because this person's just trying to kill absolutely everything instead of go through this already extremely long level. <laughs> That's true. How is this only 15 minutes more than Metal Slug 2? <laughs> I'm actually kind of curious now, uh... With the longplays.org version, plays like in terms of length. That knife blatantly hit, but it's still wet. Attempt in long play, unless there's long plays. Oh, um, yeah, it's like half an hour shorter than this. Gotta be thorough. <laughs> Maybe this was a mistake. I mean, at least we got higher video quality, I guess. Yeah. Man, I can't get enough of this game. Like, I, I can make fun of it, but no, I love this game to death. Me too. Easily one of my favorites in the arcade. Oh yeah, the bullets can ricochet off of stuff sometimes. It doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. 
Just go through. Mine, have it your way. <laughs> I like even the clone did a like taunt animation. It's like whatever, dude. This isn't a secret. It's just. <laughs> you can't gain levels in this game. <laughs> Also, this machine always teabagging. <laughs> it's true. This is what happens when a survivor plays uh, Metal Slug 3. <laughs> oh god, I forgot there's more. Oh, there's a lot more. <laughs> yep, there's definitely more. Oh no. <laughs> I just looked at the t time meter. <laughs> uh... There's a finite amount of time in this video, it's just... A lot. <laughs> We've got 60 well, seconds to beat the stage, and damn it, we're gonna use all of those not actual seconds. <laughs> I, I feel like this person really thinks this is Metal Slug Attack, and is just <laughs> trying to grind resources. I mean, drop shot, uh, that's, uh, it was worth waiting these 30 minutes. Just casually graze the hula hoops. <laughs> you know what saddens me the most? This person knew exactly when these zombie clones were coming. <laughs> this implies that this was practiced. I mean, it, it had to be, because they're not taking any damage. Like, you don't get a deathless run in this game without a lot of time put into it. I wish I had as much time as this player. <laughs> I should know, I've tried. <laughs> the robot over there is like, um... Any time. <laughs> I'm not gonna bother you, I don't want to be rude. <laughs> okay, finally you're facing me. You've acknowledged my existence, thank you. <laughs> also that walker bomb. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope, like, when you finally get to the final boss, it's like, the fuck? <laughs> and I guess a good time is now as any to mention there, like, not only are there all the different weapons, there's also, like, versions where the lettering is, like, pulsing, and it actually is, like, just a bigger, better version of that weapon. Yeah, you get that with the laser gun a lot, I noticed. Yeah. Oh wow, seeing some drop shot actually. <laughs> Finally, a use for the drop shot. <laughs> and it's funny because if you combine that with the big form, like, most weapons have like four variants. Or at least like half of them do. Just. Yeah. There's like big rockets, big laser, big fire, big shotgun, big heavy machine gun. It's just that the big stuff happens so rarely, we never really got a chance to talk about it until the random, oh my god, this guy is just way too thorough, let's throw in an anecdote. Just give you plenty of time to admire this weird zombie death animation. I don't know, I'm sorry, this animation is super weird to me. I guess it's their best way to convey decomposition with the graphical detail they got. <laughs> It also implies that their blood is, like, purple when they're dead. I mean, it's, obviously it's green now, but... Yeah, the zombie version normal is purple, even though they vomit red. I remember the, the male one, uh, their hair falls off, and then their head falls off, and they're just, like, standing there without a head. I mean, yeah, for decomposition, they're, like, aging rapidly and all that. Yeah, it's something. It's kind of grotesque when you think about it. Also, this anime, this little cutscene here has different variants for some reason. Like, sh yeah. Like, um, occasionally, what animation. Sorry. She occasionally doesn't kick the computer. I don't really know what causes that. What animation should we use for this cutscene? Yes. <laughs> okay, we're free, right? This level's finally over, right? Well, no. Right? We have a boss fight. God damn it! <laughs>
So here's Root Mars again! And now with like 7 million HP, but it's okay, you got an invul frame thingy. And it's also, he only has two attacks. Which is... All this stuff that we've experienced, and this is the final boss. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's disappointing, but it is oddly... straightforward. Just strangely inconsequential. Yeah. I mean, you, this person's not even using the eye frames. That's how simple its attack patterns are. Well, okay, so well, now are. It's also weird that you have this slug, but you can't move with it because it's just being held, so it's just kind of there as like a joke. It's there to give you eye frames. <laughs> even they know. I'm actually not really sure how well they knew their, uh... Like, the how abusable those iframes were. Also, the background's doing some crazy shit, too. Whoa! <laughs> the hell was that? i played through this game a million times, I do not remember that effect. Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, um... Or, I didn't pay attention, I guess. Yeah, no, I think it's been there. Also, Aria, she joined in by having a little UFO of her own. Like, this boss's challenge is how much HP it has, that's it. Yeah, pretty much. That, it, think... It's also a little weird trying to stay in a position where you can shoot it and not just knife it. And I'm not sure the knife actually does that much damage. I'm actually not sure. More damage than the pistol. Oh, okay, so it's actually optimal. I'll still get more points from it. Super grenade, alright, why not? I especially am somewhat familiar with the scoring system because the Vita and PS4 versions have an achievement for beating the game with like a shit ton of points. Ah. Super grenade's kind of weird. It's just like if we combine rockets with just. I don't know, just like they don't have gravity, they're just kind of. they just shoot out and explode. Rocket launcher, but faster and without the ho slight homing ability. It's too rare for me to really further dissect, though. Yeah. Oh my god, that's a lot of projectiles. High frames. It, uh, it certainly does like flame bust to move. I mean, they have to be aware of how abusable the iframes are. Seriously, they just look like bust move orbs. Man, look at these sick combos that Bub is doing. <laughs> well, at least it doesn't attack you by showing you the Sega Saturn box art for bust move 3. Oh, its brain explodes, and then its eyes roll back. I mean, it's kind of dead as shit. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh yeah, CEO President. You're great. I like that he has two job titles. <laughs> Mission complete. My name is my title. Good thing this is above the ocean, because, uh... That, that thing would probably not, you know, be a good thing to hide in. I like that this is only second place. Oh, God. I hate to see what their <laughs> practice run was. <laughs> oh, I love this. Final mission two, start! Like, everybody has, like, a unique animation for, uh, what part of that thing they're on. Also, it's nice to know Morton still didn't get in actual clothes yet. <laughs> oh, this credit sequence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, I think the gun is actually different depending on who you're playing. I wouldn't put it past them. Because I remember the, uh, the gun I usually see has, a. Uh... I actually don't know even what it is, but there's something kind of like dangling off the bottom of the, uh, the grip. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would definitely not put past them to do that. God. 
Given all the attention to detail we've seen already. Hi, Rip Mars. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> See that in gruesome detail? Look what you've done. Flying fox. Nice to know Tails worked on this. <laughs> Half of curry and rice. Is it? <laughs> Enemy's brain? Oh, oh my favorite is Guilty Gear main! <laughs> she just slammed her key on the keyboard, thinking that's how computers worked and uh, that's how the AI became to be. Okay, we need to crunch this out faster, pours blood on herself. <laughs> Sound section. Hiya! Oh, hiya. These these are just screen names. <laughs> they're not pseudonyms, it... they're just actual screen names. You know we joke about like these pseudonyms? Technically, we develop stuff under pseudonyms. It's true. <laughs> Although it's not because of any Japanese bullshit rights, it's just because my name's a lot more boring than that. It's because internet privacy. <laughs> also, a funny anecdote about this. That was supposed to be a sequel hook in case, like, SNK somehow managed to survive. <laughs> they had more ideas after all that. <laughs> what is it a hook for, though? It's just like, there's a fish. <laughs> now you have to fight fish people. <laughs> In addition yeah. to the crab people you've already fought. Yeah, I guess we didn't get mermen, so that would be uh, something else.